Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shah, Baha Shum, Rakha Kwadash. Double honor to our elder apostles and elder bishops with great millstone. Peace and blessed to the hopeful elect. Shalom. Shalom to the elect. What are you celebrating? The real Independence Day is coming. What are you celebrating now? What are you celebrating for? The real Independence Day hasn't come yet, but it is coming. All right. And that real Independence Day, the true independence is when Yahweh Shah returns to the earth to deliver the elect of Israel. OK. He's coming back to deliver the elect, which at this point in time represents the nation of Israel. OK. Because the rest of the nation of Israel is going to come back in the kingdom through the elect. But Yahweh Shah is returning to liberate his people. Right now, we're not liberated. And when the 4th of July, when the Independence Day of Esau Edom was declared, we were still in slavery. So there's nothing to be celebrating. All right. You got a lot of Jake out today, barbecuing, popping firecrackers, you know, shooting guns. Whatever they do, we're still in captivity. So celebrating is very foolish because you're celebrating servitude. You're celebrating an Edomite holiday. That's for them. That's not for us. OK, and it's funny how even Esau Edom is celebrating it. You know, these Edomites in America, it's funny how they're celebrating it because the Edomite in Britain, in particular, the, the, uh, the Rothschilds, you know, the uh, international banking families, all right, they still control America. So that's stupid even for the Edomites to be celebrating that. The Edomites over here in America, it's silly for them to do it, let alone Jake here doing it. It's even worse for you, but let's get into it, all right? Now, this is in The National Museum of African American, which we're not African Americans, we're Israelites. History and culture. All right, that's the website. Okay, you see the website at the uh, the top of the screen. Under paradox and promise, a nation's story. What to the slave is the Fourth of July? And that was said by Frederick Douglass. Douglas, all right, say his name again. That was said by Frederick Douglas. All right, now I'm gonna read a little bit of this and I'm gonna get into some scriptures. Now it says, This year, the 4th of July takes on even greater meaning than usual as the country prepares to celebrate its independence in a measure of freedom with more opportunities to safely spend the holiday with friends and loved ones, especially after the shutdown. Everything opened back up. OK. Which I believe this article is uh, pretty old itself. But it's still relevant. Because you got a lot of people that was out this weekend. OK. Indeed, the notion of independence. Of freedom is cause for celebration, yet it is important to remember that in 1776, the newly independent nation free from the tyranny of the British, still held hundreds of thousands. Now it says African-Americans of African-Americans, really Israelites in captivity. So what the hell are you celebrating, man? All right. Which that war lasted, you know, the Revolutionary War, the American War. It lasted from 1775 to 1783. OK, but it began in 1775. But you see, it's for the Edomites, you know, from the uh, the 13 colonies. You know, that was them breaking off from Britain. You know. Because of heavy taxation, you know, because they weren't being represented in Parliament, you know, that's for them. That's not for you, Jake. You still picking cotton. I'll read a little bit more. 
This year's Independence Day celebration comes on the heels of the nation taking a significant step in, in reckoning with its past by acknowledging Juneteenth, which, which is some bullshit. Juneteenth, some bullshit, okay? Once again, we're still in captivity, all right? As a federal holiday. And they did that this year. They made it a federal holiday. It don't fucking matter, man. That's really a slap in the face to you, Jakes, man. That's Esau spitting in your face. He ain't giving you nothing. Don't give a damn if he's giving you a, uh, a so-called holiday, giving you your own so-called month, a month dedicated to you, give you certain streets that are, uh, are named after false leaders he set up for you. Damn near every major city in America got a Martin Luther King Drive or Martin Luther King Street, you know. They give you your leaders. They give you what they want to uh, give you. And it tells you in the Apocrypha, if, you know, the Edomites do good, they do it unwillingly. Meaning they made a mistake if they did good to you, man. Anyway, uh, getting back into this, like I said, Juneteenth, some bullshit. And it was made a federal holiday. But read on. It says Juneteenth provides an opportunity for celebration. Not true. And commemoration of the moment that freedom came for some of the then millions of enslaved Israelites, not black people, in the nation. It took the 13th Amendment to ultimately provide freedom for all enslaved Israelites and bring the nation out of the bondage of slavery. Both Juneteenth and Independence Day champion landmark victories and a prideful history and culture. That's all we need on that. You know? But this is the point right here. What to the slave is the 4th of July? I ain't got nothing to do with you, man. Nothing to do with you. But let's get some scriptures. Like I said, the real liberation is coming. And that's what we're waiting for. Okay? The day of our salvation. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 3. And it shall come to pass in that day. In that day, what day? The day that America is destroyed. All right. The, the day the Lord comes back. The day of the Lord. The day of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. The day Yahweh Shah returns. And it shall come to pass in that day. It shall come to pass in the day that the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. And we still serve in hard bondage, so why are you partying? All right. Even when it comes to um, our own high holy days, you know, and not saying that Jake can't be happy, but, you know, certain holidays, certain holy days, for example, like the Passover are highly serious. You're not supposed to be, you know, partying it, it uh, up. You know, that's a solemn assembly, man. Meaning it's serious. We got to get the hell up out of here. Then we're going to be partying. Then we're going to celebrate. You know, but yeah, that's the real Independence Day. That day, we're gonna be free from this shit, man. Let me get something else. Let's go to this is we in the book of Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1 down to 2. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. With the word, save your power. Comfort ye comfortably to Jerusalem. Well, let me read that again. Salakia. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she have received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Right. So the point is. Our warfare is accomplished. So after this captivity, we're not going into captivity again. It's enough. All right. In the Lord's sight, this is enough. And especially after Jacob's trouble. OK, that has to happen first. That great tribulation got to come and then it's going to be enough. OK. But we're supposed to be confident in one another with these words, man. 
because this is our independence. When the Lord come, not now. All right. We're not sovereign now. We have no power now. We're going to get power when the Lord comes. Okay. Isaiah chapter 63, verse four, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart. And the year of my redeemed is come. So it's a certain set time when the deliverance is going to be here, man. Okay. And it's going to be at the same time when you see the vengeance. But that's the balance. You have vengeance and you have salvation, destruction and salvation. Okay. The year of his redeemed. Who are the redeemed? The elect. Those are the ones that are bought back. Okay. And Yahweh Shai is the only way, man. Because we've been here for over 500 years. Because, you know, when you include the northern kingdom, not just Judah, Benjamin, Levi, we've been here for a long time. All right? The, 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 uh, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. All right? Because the northern kingdom was here in the Americas first. All right? But, you know, when you begin the time period of 1492, up until right now, that's over 500 years. Okay? So check this out. It's an oldie but goodie. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord, Yahweh, shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. We know Egypt is synonymous with bondage. And this new Egypt would be America. We know how we got here. We know how we got here. All right? Now, the northern kingdom, they weren't brought here into, into uh, captivity, but they still came over here on ships. And they eventually went into captivity. And then after them, the southern kingdom came over here, but they came over here on cargo slave ships. All right. So that's how we travel here. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning the land of Israel, we wouldn't see it for a long time. And there, this Egypt, you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So once again, you celebrating nothing, man. So if no regular man if no ordinary man can buy you or redeem you who can redeem you yeah i was shy and that's when you're gonna celebrate okay there's only one redeemer acts chapter 4 verse 12 neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved it is not no damn Jesus. That name is Yahweh Shah. All right. That's the name. Yahweh Shah, which means he is the deliverer. Okay. And I'm going to end off on this. In the Apocrypha. Second Ezra chapter 13. Verse 25. This is the meaning of the vision, whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea. The same is he whom the heavenly father, the highest, have kept a great season. Yahweh Shah. He's been in the spiritual realm for 2000 years now. Which to the heavenly father, that's two days. OK, but to us, that's a great season. Which really Yahweh Shah was reserved from the foundation of the earth to do the things that he's going to do, you know? So he was set up from the beginning to do this, but just speaking as far as in our time, we know that the Lord came as the Messiah 2000 years ago. And we know that he's going to come back and we believe he's going to come back in our lifetime. All right. But the point is the same as he, whom the heavenly father, the highest have kept the great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature shall deliver Israel, in particular the elect. That's the creation that he's going to deliver. And he shall order them that are left behind. He's ordering us now by the word. You know, following the word, following the instruction in the book. Okay? And we are the ones left behind. Basically, the ones living in the last days that are going to see these things that are going to come on the earth. All right? This terrible time, but being able to weather that storm through the spirit of Yahweh Shah. All right. So with that, 
Lord willing, this was edifying. The real Independence Day is the day that America is destroyed. Okay? And simultaneously, when that salvation comes by way of Yahweh Shah, all right? Our Lord and Savior. So with that, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rakakwadash, double honor to our elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone, peace and blessed to the hopeful elect, Shalom, Wa, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rakakwadash, Babokasha, 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 Abad Babal.